Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Frank uh, Wei Wang from MIT CSA. And today I'm going to present to you TopoOpt, co optimizing network topology and parallelization strategy for distributed training jobs. Our society is rapidly becoming more integrated with deep neural networks, or DNNs. New data sets and models, like the recently released GPT 4, deep learning recommendation model from Meta, and the image generation model DALI 2, are invented frequently, increasing the memory and computation need for uh, training. This explosive growth has created an urgent demand for efficient distributed DNN training systems. Existing DNN training systems are built with electrical, electrical packet switches arranged in a multi-tier fat tray topology. Fat tray topologies are traffic oblivious fabrics, allowing uniform bandwidth and latency across uh, server pairs. They are ideal when the workload is unpredictable and consist of mostly short transfers. These are two inherent properties of legacy data center workloads. However, in this talk, I will show you that DNN traffic wireless these assumptions, and fat trees are actually not the best network topology for DNN training. We find that today's DNN training systems are facing a network bottleneck. Here, we define the network bottleneck as the amount of time spent on communication only, and we measure the network overhead as the number of GPU servers is increased from 1 to 16 for six DNN jobs in production at Meta. Here, the x-axis shows the number of GPU servers, while y-axis shows the network overhead. The figure here shows as the number of GPU servers increases, the network quickly takes up a significant portion of training iteration time. And in fact, the network overhead accounts for up to 60% of a DN training iteration time in Meta's production environment. Previous work has addressed the challenge of network overhead by using compression and decoding, asynchronous transmission, and better collective communication algorithms, as well as developing better schedulers, discovering faster parallelization strategy, and hyperparameter tuning algorithms with the available network bandwidth in mind. These proposals co-optimize computation and communication as two important dimensions of distributed DNN training. But what they do not is they do, they do not consider the physical layer network topology as another dimension for optimization. And just to be clear here, what I mean by the physical network topology is literally how the accelerators are connected. Assume now we have six servers or accelerators connected in a particular way, as shown here. Reconfiguring the network topology refers to moving the physical connections around to change the physical network to achieve some new connections, such that uh, that suits the new workload, as shown here in the last two topologies. A valid question is, isn't factory good enough, and why should we even consider physical topology as a dimension? To answer this question, let me show you a traffic heat map of server-to-server -server communication from a production cluster. This is the heat map of a one training iteration of a vision model running in real servers for real customers at Meta. The Y and X axis represent the source and destination servers, and each square on the heat map represents an amount of traffic between them. We notice that first, it is possible to calculate the iteration traffic pattern exactly before even running the training. And as the training progresses, this pattern does not change between training iterations for the entire training duration, resulting in the same per iteration heat map. However, when we measure the traffic pattern of other classes of DN models and look at the heat map, we see that the traffic pattern is model dependent and depends on the parallelization strategy of a training job. These observations render DNN traffic to be unique compared to traditional data center workloads and motivate us to investigate a new network design for it. And in this talk, I'll show you TopoOpt, a novel system for DNN training workloads. TopoOpt co-optimized the distributed training across uh, parallelization strategy and network topology. And as a result, TopoOpt achieves a 3.4 times faster training iteration time compared to a similar cost factory interconnects. So how should we optimize DN parallelization strategy and network topology in a huge configuration space? Let's use this screen start to represent a good configuration combined. Ideally, we would like to jointly optimize the DN parallelization strategy and network topology using a cross-layer optimization formulation. However, finding the optimal parallelization strategy is itself an NP-complete problem, and adding network topology to it makes the problem just even harder. The other extreme is to optimize the network topology sequentially after the parallelization strategy has been found. The eventual combination of topology and parallelization strategy in this case is likely to be inadequate in the global search space, in this case, though. 
In TopoOpt, we seek to combine the best of both worlds. To make the problem tractable, we use an alternating optimization technique to iteratively search in one plane while keeping the other one uh, constant. In detail, TopoOpt divides the search space into two parts. Here on the top, TopoOpt takes a fixed network and generates a parallelization strategy. Different algorithms can be used for this part. After it finds a suitable strategy, we feed this strategy into the bottom topology optimization component, which is the focus of this work. Here, the component finds the traffic routing behavior and the physical topology. We extract the traffic demand and feed it into an algorithm that allocates the topology. The bottom plane then uh, returns a network topology and routing, which we feed back into the top plane and continues the search. Hence, we go back and forth between these two planes and record the final combined configuration in the end. And now let's focus on our topology problem here. What algorithm should we use to find the topology in this framework? Well, let's start by considering an example traffic pattern generated by one training iteration of a DNN model using a particular parallelization strategy on a cluster of 16 nodes. This pattern arises from two type of data dependencies. The first one corresponds to activations and gradients computed during the forward and back propagation steps. This corresponds to the lightweight but dense rows and columns uh, of green squares on this graph. We will refer to them as modal parallel transfers. On the other hand, the other type refers to synchronizing the model weights across accelerators through a step called O-reduce. On this figure, that corresponds to the diagonal line here. And we see the traffic is very large, yet sparse. Now consider the problem of finding a network topology for this traffic matrix with a degree constraint of three. The conventional wisdom here is to allocate as many parallel links as possible to large flows and leave the small flows to take multiple hops across the network. In this case, we would create this parallel ring network topology as shown on the right. This approach works for several data center traffic patterns, but it leads to suboptimal topologies for distributed DNA training. While the size of O-reduced transfer is larger than the modal parallel transfers, modal parallel transfers have a higher communication degree. And hence, this approach forces the modal parallel flows, for instance, this one on the top, to have a very large hop count, thereby degrading the training performance. In summary, the two types of transfers have different characteristics, and both transfer types present in a training iteration. And in TopoOpt, we seek to meet these two goals simultaneously. We want to allocate ample bandwidth for the O-reduced transfers, as well as ensuring a small hop count for the modal parallel transfers. How do we do it? So we meet both goals by demonstrating a unique property of DNN training traffic. Consider the previous traffic heat map. The common or reduced pattern is shown here as a ring with consecutive node IDs, as shown in the figure here. However, this is not the only possible valid ring. Let's say I connect each server with a node ID 5 away from the node itself. That would correspond to a different or reduced permutation, as shown in the center image. The right figure here shows yet a similar example with different permutation. Note that the parallelization strategy stayed the same across these three cases, and the modal parallel transfers also remained the same across them. On the other hand, we changed the O-reduced traffic pattern without altering the parallelization strategy while maintaining the correctness of O-reduce itself. We define this property as mutable, and hence O-reduced transfers are mutable, whereas modal parallel transfers are not. Intuitively, this is because a modal parallel transfers is composed of network flows among nodes that contain different parts of a DNN model, thus creating immutable data dependencies, while all reduced transfers contains network flows among the node that handles the same part of the model, providing more flexibility here. With this property in mind, TopoOpt takes a step further. Instead of just selecting one all reduced order, what we do is we find multiple per, uh, permutations for each, and for each O-reduced group, and overlap their corresponding sub-topologies, as shown here. By splitting our O-reduced transfer and construct a physical topology that adapts all three sub-topologies, as shown on the right, TopOpt can efficiently serve O-reduced uh, traffic at a high bandwidth while decreasing the hop count for modal parallel transfers. There's another thing I have not clarified. How did I end up choosing the previous three rings? Well, while overlapping multiple permutations sounds very straightforward, there is one more challenge. Navigating through the set of all possible O-reduced ordings is non-trivial. 
since the number of possible permutations is order of n factorial for n nodes. To reduce the search space for all possible permutations, Topov designs ring generation rules to only find regular permutation as the candidate. Here, we define regular permutation as a connection where every server connects to another one with a fixed distance delta away from it. And here in this figure, the last two permutations are regular with a delta of 1 and 5. These deltas that we can choose are the positive integers less than n, such that the greatest common divisor between delta and n is 1. So uh, hence, they are co-prime. And that would allow us to reduce the search space to order of n only. And among these possible delta distance, Topop chose a set of them such that the, uh, within the degree limit to minimize our cluster diameter. And what our algorithm does is it bounds the cluster diameter to the order of d times d root of n. Now I've shown you the topology to construct. A practical question is how do we even realize a network like this? And the answer is optical switches. So this is an illustration of a topop cluster connecting to optical switches. In the logical level, optical switches connect the ports internally together to form circuits allowing direct point-to-point -point communication. In our lab, we have built a fully functional 12-node degree 4 testbed using an optical patch panel, as shown here on the left. And we integrate our regular permutation algorithm with NICO, NVIDIA's communication library, to for, and perform real-world training on this testbed. Now here shown on the right is an example of logical topology we have created for a particular deep neural network. And here, this one, this is a video showing the reconfiguration step to alter the network topology. In our Telesen optical patch panel, a robot hand grips the fiber, automatically finds a path for the fiber to move to the destination without entangling with the other ones, and reconfigures the network as a result. Now let's dive into the evaluation. We evaluate Topop with large-scale simulation and a small-scale prototype. And in this presentation, we will show the simulation result. The artifact code is open source and can be found online. Let me begin by introducing the compare schemes. For all schemes, the server has identical computational resource. Starting with our Topop cluster, the total number of servers is 432, degree of each server is 8, and the bandwidth of each link is 100 gigabits per second. The first comparison point is an ideal electrical switch that can scale to any number of servers, where each server is connected to the switch via a link uh, with bandwidth d times b. And in this case, that corresponds to 800 gigabits per second. It can be shown that no network can communicate faster than this ideal case for a fixed server injection bandwidth. This ideal switch can be approximated with a full bisection uh, bandwidth factory of the same bandwidth, and it will cost about 3.4 more times compared to the Topopt cluster. To also compare the performance of Topopt uh, to a similar cost factory architecture, we simulate a full factory where each server has one NIC and the bandwidth of each link is selected such that this network costs the same uh, or similar to the Topopt cluster. And in this case, the link bandwidth will be 200 gigabits per second. For each topology, our algorithm finds the best parallelization strategy for a given DNN model. We run a series of simulations where several jobs are executed together and compare the 99 percentile iteration time at different low, which we control by varying the number of active jobs. Here, the green line shows the performance of an ideal switch, which represents as an upper bound for the performance. The blue line here shows the 99 percentile iteration time of a factory. Due to, an due to the insufficient bandwidth, factory exhibits a slower iteration time, especially as the workload of the cluster goes up. The red line here shows the performance of a Topoopt system that costs the same as the factory system. Topoopt provides more bandwidth and isolates the job perfectly in this case, thereby achieving up to 3.4 times faster than that percentile latency compared to a cost similar factory topology. And other experiments with varying bandwidth reconfiguration delay and test by results can be found in the paper. Now let me show you a demonstration of Topoopt in larger scale. So this is credit to Natalie uh, Muradin. He, uh, she's an excellent undergrad student in our lab. We built this website to illustrate the network topology and parallelization strategies used in Topopt. Let's look at a model called NCF, or Neural Collaborative Filter. And what I'll show here is a cluster of size 128. And the, let's keep the server degree 4. And we execute the Topopt algorithm. And here we go. On the right, we have a representation of the DNN model here. And on the left is a physical network topology, where each dot represents an accelerator, while each line represents a link here. 
And different color links represent various permutations chosen by TopoOpt, as you can see here. In the middle, we see a traffic heat map of this particular DN. Note that the communication here is dense, or what we call a many-to-many -many transfer. And, to, and this pattern arises from the op uh, optimal polarization strategy for this model. Topoop construct the topology so that the physical network has a low diameter. In fact, if we click on any of the square here, it will show you the route across any two pair of servers. And we can, sh uh, in fact, the longest path between any server pair in this particular case is 10. And such network topology efficiently transmit the model parallel traffic, and we can achieve a factor of two speed up compared to a cost equivalent factory. And this for fun, let's look at another DN model, with, uh, which is a DRM model, and I'll increase the degree. And this is what we find. And in this case, the network has a diameter of five, if you click on all of these squares, and the top-up can achieve a speed up of three times compared to the factory network. And let's get back to the slides. And that covers the most important parts of TopoOpt. In conclusion, we propose TopoOpt, the first system to co-optimize DN training with demand-aware network topology. TopoOpt leverages the mutability of DN traffic to search and construct the best topology. And as a result, we can achieve up to 3.4 times faster than 99% of iteration time compared to cost-equivalent factories. Thank you very much, and please let me know if I can answer any questions.